Hello everyone, in this video we're going to explain how to set up a Galileo scope. So if you're watching this video either A, you tried setting up the telescope by yourself and failed miserably, or B, you're taking the core class observing the universe with Mallory Roberts. Of course I am NYUAD! In a few moments from now, you'll have turned this into a shiny new telescope and be as happy as our friend Galileo here. So let's get right into it. To build this telescope, you'll require a Galileo scope kit, a scale, a pencil, a black marker, a marker or anything else that's cylindrical shape that you can use for rolling, a blade or a pair of scissors, a roll of tape, a microfiber cloth, liquid adhesive, don't get the glue stick, this doesn't work too well, and a bunch of rubber bands. For step one, you'll be requiring this template and we need this small square called A1. Carefully remove the square out of the template. Fold along all these lines, ensuring that the black color part is the internal part of the tube. Use a scale to make sure that it's precise. Fold all of them to make a hexagonal shape and make sure that the grey part is the one that you glue inside. Like so. After folding this, you want to make sure that you apply glue to this white part and insert it onto the grey part. After letting it dry for a while, keep it aside. For step 2, we require this template. Cut out the two hexagons B2 and B3 out of the templates and remove the circular discs out. Carefully remove the hexagons out of the template Remove the circular discs and detach the two of them. Fold all the six tabs of the hexagon, making sure that the black part faces the inside. Fold them forwards and try to form a little hexagon with the black part facing the inside. Do the same thing for the next one and we'll be using these for placing it inside the tube. Take both the hexagons and place them inside the tube without any glue. These are going to form the supports of this while we glue it together. For step 3, we'll be requiring this template and we cut out the rectangle A2. Using a cylindrical sketch pen or anything else, roll the part A2 such that the print is on the outside and roll it as such in this direction. Just hold it in place so that it has a sort of a cylindrical shape. Fold along the line on A2. Get the internal tube from earlier and using the fold line that we just made on A2, point it exactly at one edge of the internal tube and we glue it over here. After the glue has dried, we now apply glue further to the five free edges 
Make sure it's not the side, but rather the edge that you apply glue to. After applying glue to the five edges, just roll it over and give it a nice cylindrical shape. You'll notice that there's a free edge over here that does not stick to the end. We'll come to that later. For now, just get a bunch of rubber bands and wrap it around this and let it dry. After placing the rubber bands, keep it on the side for it to dry and it should hopefully retain a cylindrical shape. After setting it aside to dry, we remove the rubber bands and place glue on the last free edge and complete the cylinder. Now we'll be moving on to the ocular tube. So for step 5, we'll be requiring this template from earlier and we cut out B1. From the objective tube that we used earlier, remove the hexagonal parts because those are just for support. We need them for the ocular tube. Using a black felt pen, color this part in order to have two black hexagons. Ensure that they're completely covered black because we'll be needing this for the ocular tube and we don't want any light passing through which is why we colored it black. Let this dry on the side and until then get the template B1 and fold it along the fold lines just as before. Fold it to make a hexagonal shape and following the previous procedure, just put glue along this free edge and coat it with the gray part. After the internal tube has dried, remove the rubber bands and glue the last bit. Put the rubber bands back on and let it dry. Get back the ocular tube and the two hexagons. We'll now put glue to each of the six ends of the hexagon and we stick that into the ocular tube. For step 6, we'll require this template and we'll be cutting off B4. As usual, we'll be rolling this side along with the marker, making sure that the print is on the outside. Roll it along this side. Bend along the edge marked out over here. Get back the ocular tube and use the bent edge to be exactly flush with one of the edges of the ocular tube, making sure that this edge is protruding out of the ocular tube. In the same way as the objective tube, we now apply glue to the five edges of the ocular tube. 
Make sure that it's not the sides, but rather the edges. After applying glue to the five edges, roll it up making sure that all the five edges are actually stuck and place rubber bands around it the same way as the objective tube. Keep this on the side to dry and then we take off the rubber bands and glue the last edge to the ocular tube. Now we'll be moving on to the main tube. So step 8 requires us to use C1 and C2 from these two templates. This looks pretty much the same as the objective as well as the ocular tube and by now you must have recognized the pattern that you just fold along the lines leaving the last grey edge, form a hexagon out of it and glue the five edges. So we'll be following the same method again. Although this time, these two edges that are grey and the intersection of them will be marking a cross but rather on the back side. After forming it into a sort of a hexagon, we apply glue to this edge, making sure that the edge of the cross is left open. Leave it on the side to dry and follow the exact same procedure for C2. For step 9, we'll be needing this template and we'll be cutting out C3 and C4. Fold it in such a way that the black part is facing inside. Remove the two circular discs. We don't need that. Fold it in such a way that the black parts are facing inwards and you create a kind of a block in such a way that these black edges overlap with these grey edges and we'll glue them later to form a hexagonal block. Fold along all of the lines in order to form a sort of a hexagonal block with the black part facing inside. When you're done folding all the edges, apply glue to the grey areas and let the black tabs overlap it just so far as it ends at the grey line. Don't let it go further than that. After the glue has dried, take a black marker and color the sides of the hexagon in order to make it black. Follow the exact same method for C4. Get one of the main tubes and one of the internal reinforcements and put this in, you want to try to center it, probably use a pencil and just push it in approximately towards the center. Do the exact same thing with the other main tube and internal reinforcement. For step 11, we'll require this template and we'll be cutting out C5. As usual, we don't need this.
Pull the six tabs inside such that the black part forms the internal surface. Turn it back and color the hexagon black. If you have enough time on your hands, which I guess you won't if you're taking this as a J-term, then you might just as well color the rest of it black. But for this, you just need the hexagon black. Take one of the main tubes and stick the hexagonal part inside, making sure that the tabs are facing outwards. Push it just so that the tabs are half protruding outside. Once you've sort of set this, glue it in place. Get the other main tube and make sure that the crosses are facing opposite to each other. What we're gonna do is the protruding halves of the hexagon are gonna fit inside the other main tube, making sure that the crosses are exactly aligned with each other. So in order to do this correct, just bend the tabs slightly outwards. And then try aligning this Once you see that it fits properly, you can now apply glue to the tabs and fit this in place. After the glue has dried, you might just want to take a bit of tape to secure the main tube in place. After you're done with this, Ensure that there is no kink and that the two hexagonal tubes forming the main tube are exactly aligned with each other. Once you're done with this, we can keep this on the side. For step 13, we'll be using this template and we'll be cutting out C6. You to get the marker again and roll out in this direction. As usual, fold along the bend. Now what you want to ensure is that the red leather ends exactly at any one of the ends of the, the main tube. So following the same procedure as before, you get the little grey part and align it exactly with one of the edges. After applying glue to it, we then apply glue to the five edges of the main tube and then we hold it in place with rubber bands. After the glue has dried, we'll remove the rubber bands and glue the last edge to the tube. Put back the rubber bands and let the tube dry for a while. Moving on to the center of the main tube, we'll be requiring this template for step 14. We'll be cutting out this template C7. As usual, we'll be rolling it to form a cylindrical shape following this direction. Fold along the bend. Now before we put this onto the main tube, you might want to just color along the tape line that we made over here with the black marker, just so that there's no more light entering inside. You might want this to dry for a while. You might want to double coat it just so that when you hold this edge and cover it up, you should not be able to see any light passing through. You might want to coat it with a black marker as many times as you want until you can't see any light passing through. After the marker has dried off, you'd want to glue back the outer section to the tube. As usual, we'll be gluing this edge 
onto one of the edges of the tube but the edge that you choose exactly has to be the one that you glue the previous part onto. So looking at the tube, you find that edge and that's exactly where you'll be gluing this edge. Before you glue it on, just make sure that the place you glue it on, there's no gap in between. As done previously, you'll be gluing the five edges of the main tube and roll around the casing. If you follow the instructions correctly, you should have the two outer casings ending exactly at the same line. Place the rubber bands around the center casing and let it dry for a while. While that's drying up, we can move on to step 15. For that, we'll require this template and we'll be cutting out C8. As usual, we'll be rolling it along with a marker in this direction. Fold along the bend. After the glue has dried, remove the rubber bands from the center casing. We now glue along the last edge. Put back the rubber bands and let this dry. Getting back this end, we'll be gluing along the grey tab to the exact same spot as we started with the other casings, making sure that the red leather ends on the end of the tube. So in this orientation. As done previously, glue along the five edges of the main tube. Wrap rubber bands around this and let it dry for a while. After the glue has dried, remove the rubber bands and glue the last edge onto the tube. Put back the rubber bands and let it dry for a while. After the glue has dried, we now move on to step 16 for which we will require these two templates and we'll be cutting out C9 and C10. We won't be requiring the middle part. This is what it should look like, a tiny ring. And this we shall place at the ends of the tube and stick it along to it. Once the glue has dried, you'd want to cut off the excess covering, the part that you can see in white. So get the part that you want to cut
Follow the exact same procedure for C10. We'll now be moving on to the lens mount of the objective tube. For this, you'll require this template and we'll be cutting out the three strips A3, A4 and A5. We'll start with the smallest one, A3. You'd want to bend all of them facing the outside such that this print is facing the outside. After bending it, you'd want to make a hexagon shape and glue along the grey edge marked A3. Let this dry for a while. After this, we'll follow the exact same procedure for A4 and A5. By now you should have three hexagons of increasing size. You want to get back the objective tube from earlier, remove the rubber bands and put a line of tape vertically. The tape helps in smooth sliding of the objective tube. You now want to test whether the hexagons fit along the objective tube. So first get the smallest hexagon, find the white part of the objective tube and place the hexagon such that the inner tube of the objective tube lines exactly with the outer hexagon. The two hexagons should be aligned perfectly. Now get the medium sized hexagon and place it with its edges aligned with the sides of the previous hexagon. Like such. Now get the biggest hexagon and place it exactly aligned with the first hexagon, the smallest one. Like such. Now when you see that this is aligned perfectly, you're supposed to glue them together by placing glue along the six edges of the hexagons. Once the glue has dried, we'll now put on the outer covering. For that we'll require this template and we'll be cutting out A6. You want to round it using the marker. and bend along the folded line. You'll notice that there's a bit of a protrusion over here and just along the folded edge we'll glue it along one of the edges of the outer hexagon such that the protrusion forms a bit of an outer casing. This is where we'll be placing the lens. Apply glue to the inner side of the bended edge. Apply glue to the five edges of the outer hexagon and roll the outer covering to form a cylindrical shape. After the glue has dried, remove the, rub the rubber band and glue the last edge. For step 23, we'll require this template. We'll be cutting out A7, which provides the inner lining
We'll now roll it using a marker, making sure that the printed edge faces the inside. After the glue has dried, we now place the inner lining within the objective tube. If you want, you could place glue on the outer edge, but since this fits precisely, you could do it without placing any glue on it. For the next step, you require this template and we'll be cutting out A8. We'll apply glue to the edges of this on the white part and you place it like so on the back end and then you can cut off the excess. We're now going to insert the lens into the objective tube. This is going to be the 42mm lens which is the bigger one. You ideally want to have a microfiber cloth so that you're handling it with care and that you don't leave fingerprints on it. The 42mm lens is a planar convex lens, meaning that one side is curved outwards and the other one is flat. The way we place the lens inside the objective tube is with the flat part facing the inside and the curved part facing the outside. In order to figure out whether it's which side is curved and which side is flat, Place the lens onto a flat surface. If the curved part is facing the flat surface, you would notice a bit of a gap from the bottom, which you can see by keeping your eye on the same level as the flat surface. After figuring out which part is flat, you'd want to take some glue and put it at the bottom edge of the curved lining, just so much as the width of the lens itself. You don't want any glue coming onto the main part of the lens. You then want to carefully place the flat edge of the lens to complete the objective tube we'll be using this template and we'll be cutting out A9. Apply glue to the white edge and place it onto the objective tube. See, no problem. Now that the objective tube is ready, get back the main tube and find the edge which has the larger red leather, which is this one. Place the objective tube leaving about a centimeter of the black leather visible. We'll now stick the objective tube in this position firmly by applying glue. We now move on to the lens mount of the ocular tube. For this, we require this template and we'll be cutting out B5 and B6. We'll follow the same method as the hexagons for the objective tube lens mount. Now that you have the two hexagons ready, get back the ocular tube. We'll be placing the hexagons the same way we did with the objective tube lens mount. So place the small hexagon. Can you see all that glue in the...
Once the glue has dried, we'll now be taking this template and cutting out B7 to form the outer casing. As usual, we'll be rolling it with a marker and we'll bend along the fold line. Apply glue onto the inner part of the white edge. Once the glue has dried, apply glue to the five edges of the hexagon. Roll it tightly so that it forms a cylindrical shape. And then, once the glue has dried, remove the rubber band and apply glue to the last edge. Place the rubber band back on top of it and let it dry. While the glue dries, we'll remove the rubber bands from the ocular tube. and put some tape along it vertically for smooth movement. For step 30, we'll be requiring this template and we'll be cutting out B8. Apply glue to the white edge of the ring and fit it onto the ocular tube. Cut off the excess as required. For step 31, we'll require this template and we'll be cutting out B9, which forms the inner lining. Roll the inner lining with the print facing inwards. Once the glue has dried, place it inside the lens mount of the ocular tube. It fits in flush, so you might not need to use glue. Now that the inner lining is done, we get the small lens. The small lens is a planar concave lens, meaning one side is flat and the other is concave, curved inwards. Get a microfiber cloth to handle it with care. In order to figure out which part is planar and which one is concave, just feel it with your hand. The one that curves inwards is concave. That will be facing the outside. The flat surface will go inside the ocular tube. Once you've figured out which side is flat and which one is concave, Apply glue to the inner lining of the ocul ocular tube lens mount. Carefully place the lens with the flat part facing inside. For step 33, we'll be requiring this template and we'll be cutting out the small circle B11. Since the circle is slightly bigger than the opening of the lens, you wouldn't really require glue. Just place this such that the circle is flush with the opening. For step 34, we'll be requiring this template and we'll be cutting out B10. Apply glue to the white part of the circle. Once the glue has dried off, cut out the excess as required. Ocular tube.
After you've cut off the excess, your ocular tube is now ready to attach to the main tube. Get the main tube from earlier and fit the ocular tube in the other open edge. With this, your galileoscope should now be ready. You could continue with steps 35 to 41 in order to add the decorative parts, but your galileoscope is ready for observations. The only thing that you might need to add is the telescope mount, which is provided with it. And if you want to find an easy way to do this, you could just place it at the center and tie it with rubber bands. This is fancy enough. Don't go through the effort of doing the other steps. The galeoscope's now ready. Go out to the night sky. Hopefully it's not cloudy. If you're in Abu Dhabi, the weather conditions are almost usually horrible for observations. But you know what? Such is life. Ha 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 ha